Hello and welcome to another hardware review here on the Retro Core channel and today we're going to be taking a look at this. This is the Marsback from GameSir. It's actually a controller which is now on Indiegogo so it's not actually released at the moment and they did send over this uh, pre-production copy for me to review for you guys here on the channel. So I'm going to put a link in the video description down below uh, to the um, Indiegogo page, which also links to the official homepage as well. They have quite a few different products which they have made in the past. Anyway, they say this is a device which will, you know, basically convert your mobile phone into an arcade machine. Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves here. <laughs> basically, it's a Bluetooth controller. So, you know, we, it is what it is. It's a Bluetooth controller. Now in the box we get this little manual here, whether this will be included in the finished product I don't know, gives you some basic information there and also a couple of QR codes to scan for iOS or Android. What they will do is they will take you to a home page where you can download an emulator called Happy Chick which is apparently the emulator which this thing is designed for. But to be honest with you, you don't need it. You can use any emulator you want, especially on Android. Okay, so this is the device itself. And as you can see, it's a fairly uh, big, sizable chunk of uh, plastic. On the bottom, we got an on-off switch. It actually runs on AA batteries, two of those. And of course, it has an auto shut off after a couple of minutes of not using it. Now, the actual build quality of the case itself is pretty solid. It feels nice enough. The joystick, unfortunately, is analog, but I was uh, kind of disappointed with that at first, but then I realized this has to work with digital and analog games. So yeah, I can uh, kind of see why they went with the analog stick, but does the analog stick actually work? That's something we're gonna have to check out. The buttons are fairly robust. They don't feel too flimsy. In fact, they have a little bit of stiffness to them. So maybe that's because this is brand new, but that would probably wear in within time. Start, uh, start and select button here and a little LED there. Okay, so how easy is this thing to uh, set up? Well, very easy in fact. So today we're gonna to be using this. This is an Asus uh, Zenfone 3. Not the most powerful phone in the world. In fact, it's actually quite old now, but it should do the job. Okay, so first of all, you uh, pair it up to your Bluetooth device. So as you can see here, it's already connected to my phone. So very easy to set up. And then basically you just uh, boot up one of your favorite emulators and this thing will connect automatically. So let's get the camera in a new position and show it running some PSP games. Okay, so here we go. The emulator is running. Here you go, <laughs> we got the message. Yeah, this phone is not very fast. Okay, so all the buttons seem to be working just fine. The arcade mode. I've got to be careful picking the music on this because last time I picked uh, or last time I featured a video racer game on my channel, Namco did me for copyright. Alright, now let me just check out the um, analog here. Yeah, that seems to be working. The more I push, the tighter the turn becomes. All right, let's see if we can drift the corner. That'll be a true sign of our decent controls. Oops. (laughs) 
Yeah, no problem. Yeah, these controls are not too bad actually. Okay. That was fairly decent. Okay, let's try it with a digital um, game. Right, for that one, mm, let's boot up the Mega Drive. We can actually use the joystick to move the menus about on this emulator, which is fairly nice. Okay, let's load up a game. Oh, that didn't go very, right. I must have pressed the cancel button by mistake there. Load up a game. Ah, yeah, I was pressing the wrong button. All right, let's see. A bit of Super Shinobi. Yeah, why not? Let's see how much I have to push left and right before it registers, because with it being analog, you don't want to be pushing all the way to get it to register, because that would um, make gameplay a little bit laggy. So let's see how much do I have to push it. Uh, quite a bit. All right, so you do have to push it quite a bit before it registers a move. But the buttons are fairly responsive. Doesn't seem to be laggy. Seems to move fairly, fairly, uh, you know, reasonably. Okay. Let's try it on a different emulator. Okay, what else can we try? Let's try it on arcade. Let's put a bit of Mame on. Now because this is a vertical scrolling game, what I like about this little case is that you can put the phone in like this and make it into a horizontal scrolling shoot 'em up screen. Okay, it's insert the coin with the select button. Oh good stuff. Just change the camera angle a little bit. Ooh, wrong button. <laughs> Dead already. Ooh, and dead again. The controls do feel a little bit loose. Let's see if we can fix that in the emulator settings. Let's go to options. Settings, see if we can fix that. Yes, we can, right here. Analog dead zone is set to normal. We'll put that down to none. Let's see how that affects the gameplay. Oh, that is much nicer, look at this. Ready? You only have to move the stick a slight amount. That's good. I keep doing that, don't I? Uh, this should be much easier to play now. Okay, so hopefully in that Mega Drive emulator, you should also be able to adjust the dead zone. <laughs> Didn't improve my game playing skills, did it? Okay. Add one, please. Bloody Roar to the new breed. So it seems this emulator automatically detected the analog um, joystick without having to do any configuration, which is cool. You go, the insect. Now, hopefully, it's also removed the dead zone. Let's just check it out. Get 
It has, yeah. Almost no dead zone. Good. Okay, good stuff. It works with PlayStation emulators as well. Okay, let's try out one more emulator and after that we'll try out some actual Android games. Uh, game Boy Advance. Let's give that a try. Uh, load game. Uh, my favorite Ninja Cop. If you've never tried Ninja Cop, you really should try it. It's an excellent game. Okay, let's see how bad is the dead zone on this emulator. Uh, it's just the same as the Mega Drive emulator, which makes sense because it's by the same um, developer. Okay, yeah, so it seems to be working fairly well here as well. No problems whatsoever. Okay, so yes, it is a fairly good joystick for your emulators. But how about using it with real Android games? How does it fare then? Well, let's take a look at some Android games. All right, let's try Rayforce or Layer Section as I like to call it. And this is a vertical scrolling game, so I'm going to put it in like this. Touch the star, can I press the button? Yes, I can use the buttons. Okay, straight away, the joystick is working. I haven't set anything up. All right, arcade mode. Now that's the back button. Must be this button. Yeah. Uh, shoot mode, uh, manual of course. All right. Working nicely, very nice. It was also very, very nice that I didn't have to set anything up as well. It was already done. Okay, let's try it with a different Android game. Okay, so here we have it running with a game that uses analog controls. So let's see how this works. Android game with analog controls. So we know it works with emulation that uses analog, as we saw with the PSP. But how about pure Android games? Yeah, that's working nicely. I can feel it straight away. Am I pressing the right button here? What's the button for accelerate? <laughs> I've got my analog controls, but I've got any accelerate. Something tells me I've got to set up the uh, controls here. <laughs> Okay, well in short, I think that this controller is uh, fairly decent to be honest. I mean, it's still a work in production, so if I had any uh, advice for the company that's making this, it would be definitely to um, add a little bit more weight to it. You know, so the uh, thing doesn't slide about too much. It does have rubber feet on the bottom, but uh, they still slide, out, slide about a little bit on the desk. So uh, yeah, it would be better if uh, it had a little bit more weight to it, to be honest. But apart from that, yeah, it's uh, fairly decent. 
maybe make the controls feel a little bit more premium as well. But yeah, overall it works and that's what matters. It seems to sync up to the phone very easily, so no problems there. And the games that I've tested on all seem to work really well. In fact, the only problems that we did have is that certain games were not supportive of, you know, Bluetooth controllers in general, or I can, or basically, um, I didn't configure it correctly. Bit like now as well. I don't think I've configured it properly again. Where's Accelerate gone? Ah, oh, silly me. <laughs> anyway, there you have it. That is the Mars back from GameSir. It's on Indiegogo right now. So if you're interested in some sort of Bluetooth controller for your mobile device that turns it into basically what is a desktop game machine, then yeah. Go and check out the Indiegogo. I'll put a link in the video description down below. Until next time, take it easy and keep on gaming.